for kind attention. The next speaker is Dr. Edward Wai. Okay, thank you again, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I'd like to present a uh, paper titled uh, Fungation in Soft Tissue Sarcoma, a Review of Its Significance. Uh, and I'd, I'd like to thank my co-authors here from the University of the Philippines. So, fungation is a uh, condition we see fairly frequently in uh, our unit, just as I believe in other low to middle income countries. Um, but it's uh, hardly um, discussed in uh, literature. With uh, fungation, when the patient presents to us with ulceration, we usually already associate it with a higher rate of local recurrence and automatically give a stamp on, of a poorer prognosis on it. And therefore, with that perspective, we treat it with amputation or with the perspective of palliation rather than cure. But are we justified to do that? What does the literature tell us? Fungation is hardly discussed in the, in the English literature. The only two major articles, one in 2009 from the University of Miami and one in 2017 from Birmingham. And when we did a critical review of these two articles, uh, we discovered that these studies included patients with uh, possibly many confounding variables. All anatomic sites were included, including trunk, uh, pelvis, extremities, all ages included. And in one study, both M0 and M1 patients were included. And in one study, also both low and high grade sarcomas were included. Uh, both studies found fungation and metastases to be poor prognosticators. So we presented a similar study at uh, the ISOS 2017 in Kanazawa. Uh, but after having reviewed these uh, two articles and realized that there were confounding variables also that we had ourselves included in that original population, uh, we reviewed that study and uh, now uh, included uh, stricter inclusion and ex exclusion criteria. So we, we tried to remove as many patients as possible with these possible confounders. So the question remained, in patients who present with fungating or ulcerating soft tissue sarcomas of the extremities, what are the results of treatment in comparison with those who don't present with fungating lesions in terms of the oncologic outcomes of local recurrence, systemic recurrence, and mortality? So we included only adult patients more than 18 years old, only high-grade lesions, only extremity lesions, only patients who presented initially without metastases, patients who had received complete treatment by our unit and who had a follow-up of at least two years or until death. And we excluded all recurrent lesions, all those who had prior treatment, and uh, the following histologies. So we looked at the patient and tumor variables, we looked at the treatment variables, and we looked at oncologic outcomes. So from an original of 100 patients, because of the strict criteria, we were reduced to 50 patients, 10 in the fungating group and 39 in the non-fungating group. As far as patient and tumor variables were concerned, we found only one significant variable, one significant difference between the two groups, that is the fungating group, um, a majority of them had arisen from uh, subcutaneous origin. In terms of treatment variables, the type of surgery, we had more amputations for the fungating group as opposed to the non-fungating group. And I think this is mainly because of the lower threshold we had for amputations for this group of patients. Uh, adequacy of margin was the same, but the adjuvant treatment given for obvious reasons was higher in the group uh, who had the li more limb salvage surgeries. Now in terms of uh, oncologic outcomes, there, were no difference, there was no difference in, in terms of local recurrence. Uh, the difference in terms of systemic metastasis was also not significant. In terms of patients who had died, uh, the difference was not significant. But when we looked at only those patients who had uh, cancer deaths, we had a trend towards a higher incidence in the fungating group, although this, again, was not significant. It, was, it approached significance at 0 0.09, but it was not significant. The five-year survival rate for the fungating group was 37%. The five-year survival rate for the non-fungating group was 54%. So in conclusion, we ended with around 50 patients with high-grade soft tissue sarcomas of the extremities who had this inclusion-exclusion of M0 and more than two-year follow-up. 
the soft tissues sarcomas with fungation uh, were more likely to be from a subcutaneous location. In our unit, they were more prone to be amputated, less often given radiotherapy. There was no difference in local recurrence. There was a trend to higher systemic recurrence, but this was not significant. More patients had died of disease, but again, this was, did not um, reach significance at 0 0.05. And the overall survival difference was 37 versus 54% uh, in the two groups. Again, thank you very much to the organizers of this convention. Congratulations. and.